hello, hello, and welcome back to these, these appendices to the Ages of Chaos videos. The reason I'm doing these videos, ladies and gents, is because there were a couple of books, uh, primarily in Age of Sigmar, that we never really touched upon, that do now come under the Chaos banner. Um... And also there has been a book released since that is well worth our time talking about. Now for the purposes of this video, I really want to talk about two of the offshoots of Chaos, uh, both of which got probably, arguably, some of the best books that are available in the Age of Sigmar very recently. The best battle tomes. I'm talking about The Beasts of Chaos and The Skaven. Now, both of these are really surprising. They're really surprising in the sense that neither of them have any, like, a big new miniatures range release. So they didn't really need to put a great deal of effort or as much effort as they, they do for the, the armies that are wholly redone into these books. But they have. In fact, the effort that's put into these books to to reinvent these armies is unbelievable. Not only in terms, uh, in technical terms, the way they work in the Age of Sigmar gaming system, but in in mythological terms, in background terms, they have gone to town on them. These books are joyous. They're absolutely joyous. I mean, one of the things I've always found is that the quality of the battle tomes or the army books as they used to be in the fantasy battle system has never really matched up to the quality of the codices in Warhammer 40,000. The codices have always been a little bit more coherent. They've always had a little bit more uh, passion put into them, it seems to me. They've always had a bit more flavour and dynamic. These books put paid to that at long last. They they equal things out. The Beasts of Chaos first. Let's talk about the Beasts of Chaos. Now, ever since they split up the forces of Chaos, way back in the latter days of fantasy battle, the Beasts of Chaos have really been in the doldrums. They've been the low-tier Chaos army that only a very few people were interested in. And that's largely because they weren't really meant to function on their own back then. And they didn't really have the same flavour or ethos. They were just the mutants in the woods that was they were kind of the dark side of the um the dark equivalent of the uh the wood elves back then and yeah they had this slightly sort of old folkloric flavor you know they were the uh, the creature they were the big bad wolf essentially they were the the beings in the woods that uh, superstitious people told tales of um to keep you on the straight and narrow they were that kind of thing you know the old folkloric bogeyman they were that sort of thing Sort of a derivative of the old fae and changeling stories. Stories of um, supernatural creatures in the woods, uh, like Le Gevordon, um in the forest of Le Gevordon, the, uh, the great beast of Le Gevordon, which was the uh, origins of the werewolf story. Um, it's They were never really that interesting, to be perfectly honest, and the miniatures were never really that interesting either. Jump forward to AOS and this surprise re-release, this sort of came out of nowhere. It came out of absolutely nowhere. There was hardly any build-up to it. Um, nobody knew it was coming. It just dropped. It just dropped with not many in the way of new miniatures. There were really only um, a terrain piece in the form of a herd stone, which is gorgeous, by the way, and a few endless spell miniatures. And that's really it. Everything else is from previous editions of the Beasts of Chaos. But what they've done for the first time ever is not only made the Beasts of Chaos a massively viable force in their own right, they are really bloody interesting in the way they work. I love the way they work now. But they've rewritten them. They've done what they do for all of the old school forces in AOS and they have rewritten them. They've slightly rejigged their dynamics so that they are highly mythologized. They are highly mythologized. So basically what they've done is taken the Beasts of Chaos and they've rethought their relationship to chaos itself they don't for the most part they don't actively worship the chaos powers they don't need to they look down on creatures that actively worship the chaos powers because they believe themselves or they regard themselves as the manifest force of chaos in its entirety they are manifest entropy and ruin that's what they are they are the antithesis of all civilization that's what they regard themselves as and their their 
nature and their mythological dynamic, they've made a religion out of destruction, out of ruining things, out of trampling down things that, that are created. Civilization itself is their nemesis, and it's what they believe they were born to trample down. They are acknowledge the existence of the chaos powers but they believe themselves to be far more the ideal manifestation of the chaos powers and their aspects than any any mortal follower who they believe to be weak they believe the mortal followers of chaos to be weak because they enslave themselves to the chaos powers in ways that these guys don't the beasts of chaos largely do what they do because they want to, because it's in their nature, because it fulfills some intention. They are savagery and atavism sort of made manifest. They're absolutely wonderful in that regard. And their dynamic to the chaos powers, therefore, is slightly different from both the mortal followers and the demons. They even look down on the demons. They actually look down on the demons because the demons have no intention of their own. They have no autonomy of their own. They are just adjuncts and slaves to the greater chaos powers. They don't regard chaos in the same way that their mortal followers do as these great complex individual entities with particular aspects that can actually grant favor or anything like that. They don't regard them in that way. They regard them as element as the faces and forms of a greater elemental power, which they which they don't revere, but they believe that they are the avatars of. Uh, and so they move through the realms, through the wild places of the realms, and they actively desolate civilizations for the act of desolation and desecration itself. They're absolutely wonderful. And within that, you have these very subtle subcultures. So you do have certain like herds that do venerate the chaos powers, although they're looked down on by the others. So you do have beastmen of Zeech and of Slanesh and of Nurgle. And uh, they don't, I mean, some of them do actually worship chaos, but very few of them. Many of them are actually, the reason they're sort of favoured by individual chaos powers is because of what they exhibit. It's because they have certain characteristics or they exhibit certain actions or tendencies that coincide with that chaos powers aspect. It's really rather fantastic. And they have gone out of their way to make sure that the beast herds that are dedicated to chaos powers are different dynamically from, say, the... Um, the maggot kin of Nurgle or the, the hedonites of Slanesh or the... Um, the what are they called the the disciples of Zeech or whatever it's really 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 bloody clever i've got to say so like the depraved drove the slake phrase of slanesh um they actually seek to emulate some of the elements of civilization that the other beastmen look down on they like pretty things they regard Slanesh as the great despoiler, that which takes what it desires, which it regards as beautiful, and destroys everything else, but also as sort of like this great fecund, almost almost like great mother figure or father figure, um, something which is rapine and which endlessly propagates its own seed through its, its, its depredations. It's really quite nasty, you know? And that conscious design choice to take the beasts of chaos and not just make them like another chaos army, but to make them dynamically different to all of the other followers of chaos has really made them something special. They re The book is great to read. It's actually an absolutely sterling read because you do get this impression of the beasts of chaos as being this semi-mythic horrors, these sort of folkloric horrors from the, the fairy tales and the dark dreams of prehistory, of pre-civilization, but which actually exist. They do exist out there. They actually are in the woods and they actually are waiting and they will eventually erupt out um, to destroy you. You even have, alongside the, uh, the herds that are dedicated to particular chaos powers, you have these greater herds um, which are coalesced around particular dynamics and philosophies. So you have the Dark Walkers. And the Dark Walkers are the 
most fae like of the um the beasts of chaos so what they th- what they do is they walk in the shadows and the unseen places they know about the realm gates they have this sort of instinctive attachment to the realm gates and they wander through them and map them and they use them to come up on their enemies in the dark in secret places where there's no help they are absolutely beautiful you have the gave spawn and the gave spawn are one of my favorites because they are a throwback to an old character in the Beasts of Chaos that's gone, gone used to have a model, but has gone sort of the way of the Dodo called Morgher. And Morgher was like the the elemental manifestation of what the beasts represent. He is basically change and abomination and degeneration made manifest. And that's what the Gavespawn uh, worship. They actually worship degeneration and transformation. So when they die, they often mutate into Chaos Spawn, which is really, really really cool. This book is amazing. It's absolutely amazing. For the first time, I really want to collect a Beast of Chaos army. I want to create a Slake Fray to go alongside my Hedonites of Slanesh because the book is so good. It's so, so good. They've gone for the gusto with it. The feeling and the flavour of it is far more like the original ROC books. And there's so much here. There's so much flavour and feeling and there's so much that makes them so, so different from what they used to be an amazing book and if even if you don't collect these guys buy the book and read it it's so bloody good um it's one of my favorites actually in recent years this is one of my favorite chaos books ever released it is that good and I actually do want to, I've even got in my head, I've got, because of this book, I've been sitting trying to percolate like a background and an ethos for my slake fray. And I've gone for like a sort of um, a Whore of Babylon, um, Lilith style background, where I'm going to create a... Um, a minotaur that is kind of, that is female it's kind of like the great mother of a herd and it is endlessly fecund so my my concept i've stolen a little bit from weave world from clive barker it's going to have some elements of the magdalene from that book so the, the 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 sort of background is that the this creature um endlessly it's endlessly hungry so it devours many of its victims and those that it doesn't devour it it kind of it's a horrible thought but it kind of uh rapes i suppose and then creates twisted nightmare children from their seed and that that is the herd that follows her um it's good there's going to be a shaman in it who is kind of like the um the mid father of this group he's the one who tends to the births with magics and whatnot and that's what it's going to be it's just going to be this entire carnival of abominations all sort of focused on this one creature which i'm going to uh, convert massively by the way but it's you can go to you can do that stuff with this but you can go to gusto with the horror of these guys and i love that i absolutely love it by the same token, we have uh, Ad- my compatriot Adam's favourite, the Skaven, were released. Again, another surprise, another massive surprise, because nobody really knew it was going to drop. Nobody really knew it was out there. It just happened. It was really quite weird. And suddenly we have a new Skaven book, and just like the Beasts of Chaos, because now the Skaven are true Chaos followers, by the way. They come under the purview of Chaos. Chaos Battle Tome right across the front, so they deserve a place here too. And uh, of course the Horned Rat now has risen to the Pantheon now that my uh, my bay Slanesh is currently... Um, well, disengaged from the Pantheon, although that is changing. Check out the next video for that. Um, the Skaven are now a fully-fledged Chaos power. And just like the Beasts of Chaos, in many respects, the, the Skaven and the Beasts of Chaos are like sister tomes because they are very similar. What they've done is exactly what they did with the Beasts of Chaos, and they've taken the Skaven and they've thought, right, how do we make them attuned to the ethos of the mortal realms how do we heighten them to make them much more mythological so they're not just rat men in the same way that the beast men are just goat men let's make them something more so they've taken the skaven and they've rejigged their background slightly so now the skaven regard themselves and actually are 
ele- in the same way that the beast men are elemental ruination and desecration the skaven are elemental entropy they are everywhere and like the beast men they're semi-mythological hardly anyone believes they actually exist they're kind of like nightmares from prehistory and i'm telling you the stuff you can do with these books now because you can anything that has the chaos uh, sign on it you can put together in the same army in aos so you could do like you could do a skaven uh, a skaven swarm a beastman herd a slaves to darkness army and a hedonites army all together in one army and that the the opportunities to create the most unique interesting forces is unbelievable as there is chaos is in the best place it's ever been i'm telling you in both game systems so what they've done the skaven are elemental entropy so they are everywhere they exist in these sub realms that weave and burrow underneath the mortal realms and not just through like the material elements of them but through the metaphysical foundations of the mortal realms what the skaven want is everything to collapse into ruin and decay that's what they want so there is some overlap between what the skaven want and what the beastmen want so you could easily create like a a nurgle um a Nurgle herd from the Beastmen and combine them with a um, a Clan Pestilence uh, Skaven clan, and that would work really bloody well. It would be brilliant. It would be so interesting. And then you could combine that with a Maggotkin of Nurgle uh, segment, and you could create the most brilliant, beautiful Chaos army imaginable. Honestly, it, it, what they've done with these books is just blown the doors wide. You can create such interesting armies. I'm actually looking through the Skaven book now and I'm thinking, right, how can I create something really beautiful to fit with my um, my Slake Frey, my Sla and my Hedonites? I could actually create like a clan molder detachment that has abominations in it that are sort of like bastardized children of my my minotaur whore of babylon character you know you can do stuff like that this book is amazing it's the best skaven book that has ever been if you don't believe me ask adam adam is a skaven fanatic he is an absolute he adores the skaven and he uh, he we've discussed at length that this book is amazing and it is it's absolutely amazing the the old skaven clans are back they're not just one big polyglot force and every single one of them is significantly different from the other in the way it's composed the way it plays but also the way the background works they've transformed the entirety of the background of the skaven to fit in with aos and they have made them so so interesting you have things like the the concept of blight city a blight city is this immense pocket realm where the skaven originate from and they gnaw out through it through these metaphys- metaphysical gnaw holes that actually undermine the foundations of the mortal realms it's so bloody cool i love it i absolutely love it they have made the skaven just wonderfully interesting and the way you can combine them with the other chaos forces to make something really special honestly for for people who love to create elaborate background for their armies for the people who love to model their forces so they've got very distinct like uh symbolism and iconography you you couldn't be in a better place you honestly couldn't be in a better place these two books skaven and beats of chaos honestly if you've never had any interest in these armies before just pick up these books and read them and i guarantee you suddenly you will you absolutely will so ladies and gentlemen when we come back i'll be uh, doing appendix b which features one of my favorite books that's been released recently i'm sure you all know which one it is until then bye bye <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.